Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome to episode 50 of the Marketing That Grows Your Business show. Today, we're going to be talking about <clears throat> fake news. What? Uh, fake news as it comes to, um, as it relates to, rather, uh, um, social media um, and the myths that we sometimes buy into without the data backing it up. Uh, so we have a special guest today that's gonna to talk about some of those myths that we probably hear quite frequently, like things like, okay, um, if I use a third party tool to schedule, then you know Facebook is going to ding me. My post is not gonna be seen on Facebook. So is that true? Like, so we're gonna be talking about those things today. So as you guys are coming in, just give me a shout out. Where in the world are you? Um, Laquita, good to see you. And Camille, good morning, good morning. Um, good morning if you are, um, I guess, on this side of the world. Uh, you In other places, it may be afternoon or evening hours. Uh, and Scott, uh, who is our special guest today, is in the lab. I'm in Tampa, Florida, back in Tampa, Florida. Super excited to be home for a little bit. I've been, as, as many of you guys know, I've been in uh, Virginia taking care of my 96-year-old dad. So my sister and I did the swap -a -roo and um, so we have somebody from Budapest, Hungary. Like Budapest is like one of my favorite places. Um, it was never on my bucket list of places to go, but then I got a chance to go and now I'm like a huge, huge fan. Uh, so we have uh, Donna is in North Carolina. And Juan, hey Juan, nice weather we're having here, right? Uh, good morning, D. All right, so a um, couple of quick little things. I have favors I have to ask. Um, guys, if you know somebody that would get value from this, um, one, I think you're going to learn a lot. We're going to talk about, you know, some of the things that are, are propagated when it comes to social media, and you're going to get the skinny. Like, is that true? Is it scientifically true? Because our special guest today runs the numbers. He does the work. Okay. So if you know anybody that would be interested in this, sprinkle it out into the world. Uh, pretty please with a cherry on top. And we're going to be doing some giveaways today, as always. Um, so if you are interested in winning some good stuff, we'll pick the winners at the end. Um, some of the things that we're going to give away today are... I'm going to give a special surprise at the end. I'm not going to tell you what the special surprise is, but it's a good one and it's worth a lot. Okay. So we're also going to be giving away our sponsor. Our sponsor is the Go Social Content Club. Uh, we're going to be giving away three um, month trials of the Go Social Content Club. The Go Co Social Content Club is designed for the entrepreneur or the business owner who is struggling to create content consistently, quality content consistently for their social media um, pl pl platforms. If that's you and you sit down and you're like, oh my gosh, like, I don't know what to post today. Um, from idea to generation to actually, all you've got to do is download it, brand it, and put it up on your socials. Um, so we're going to be giving away three uh, one-month trials to the Go Social Content Club. And we are also going to uh, be giving away an Amazon gift card today. I think it's $15 Amazon gift card. And don't forget our special big giveaway um, that I'm going to reveal. It's a reveal at the end of today's show. Now, how do you win? You win by dropping in what we call your aha moment. So hashtag aha. If you have, uh, you hear something that's like, oh my gosh, I didn't know that. Or if you heard something that you knew, but you needed to hear it again, drop in your aha moments. And that's how we pick the winners y'all. Okay. So let me get our special um, guest. I want to introduce you guys to him. He is, I don't know, golly, I'm trying to think how long I've known Scott. A long time. He's been around a long time, like me. We're oldies but goodies. Uh, and uh, let, me, let me give you a little bit of detail about him. So he is the current content scientist, that's fancy, right, for the social media lab powered by Agora Pulse, who conducts extensive tests and research to help social media managers and business owners get the most out of their post, busting myths along the way. So like I said before, he is, um, not only does he like 
find like he'll say, okay, is this true or is this true? And rather than randomly like asking around and saying, what's your, what are you doing? How are you getting that? Like he actually does the scientific experiment and gets the result, which is what we're going to talk about today. So you guys put your hands together for my friend Scott Ayers. Ah! Yeah. He yeah. does have amazing hair. Well, He's like, got better hair than me now. I mean, this is like the greatest screenshot here. This, this hair. Yes. Both of us, you know, on on screen is pretty good. Yeah, your your hair is some uncommon. Your hair is a little different today. Uh, so yeah, everybody I'm, knows. Yes, I mean, I'm trying new new year, new color. I there think I'm go. going with purple next. Ooh, that'd be good. Like I, I actually have a couple of colors of this that I may play around with here soon. Yes. Uh, and so just to, just for the fun of it and makes freak people out a little bit. But yeah, good to be on your show. Great yes. to see all these comments that are popping in. I saw somebody who was in Austin, Texas. I am up a little bit north of them in Waco, Texas. Uh, Waco. Yeah, I get to rub elbows with Chip and Joanna Gaines every once in a while. Uh, no, not really, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I could go pay them money to buy their all their stuff they sell here in town if I wanted to. Yeah, so it's good to be on the show, and I appreciate that intro. And yeah, we do go way, way back. Like, yeah, I was trying to think. It's probably been you know close. We're pushing 10 years of knowing each other, I think. Yeah, um, either you know, from when yeah. I was at Hubsy, the post planner days. I know I still remember someone will have to search for it. I'm sure it's out there. My, our CEO at post planner, Josh did his little rap at one of your events. Yes. Which is the funniest things ever. The funniest uh, thing. Um, yeah. if, in fact, um, that was when you were still with post planner yeah, yeah. and Josh like seven years there. ago. Something like mm -hmm. that. Yep. Yeah. So we go back a minute or two. Right. But right. I, I know you're currently at a girl pulse. And like right. I said, um, which is one of my favorite all time tools, which we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go through today. Um, but what is, I mean, you know, there's a lot of uh, what I, you know, whether you want to call it fake news or whatever, you know how, okay, this person says this, so it's true. Boom. Right, right. It's like, you know, you get, um, you see these posts on social media sometimes, Facebook in particular. I see it quite frequently on Facebook where, oh, Facebook's getting ready to charge us, y'all. <laughs> so, like, do you hear those? Like, that's yeah. what we're dealing with today. Um, so it is, uh, when it comes to social media and understanding that there's a lot of misinformation sometimes shared around right. not being not the political side of it. I'm talking <laughs> the business side of it. Um, where, That's a whole different show right there. Right, right. <laughs> go there. Um, but what what gave you the idea to start actually doing the work, like doing the testing to see whether some of these things are true or not? What's the backstory there? Well, it's it's a two part kind of thing. It was really the brainchild of our CEO, Emmerich. Um, I, I had known Emmerich just as long as I've known you, Kim, probably, um, when I would from my work in social media and I had, I had left post planner and then got in contact with Emmerich. He said, Hey, I got this cool idea for this thing called social media lab. We're going to test things. So I don't want to just write about all the listicles and all these tips that no one has tested. And so he's like, I think you'd be a good fit for it. And we talked a little bit and I was super stoked about it. And that was four years ago. Um, because I had probably before that, you know, as you know, I'd probably written 2,500 to 3,000 blog posts and most of it I just made up. <laughs> you know, you're like, hey, it worked for me, so it worked for you um, sort of thing. So I, I did, I was kind of the part of the problem um, in social media marketing. And so it was kind of a cool thing where like, hey, let's slow down, let's pump the brakes and let's really apply the scientific method to to, to marketing and see if, you know, we can find out what's working and not, work, not working. So for me, I mean, Kim, you're, you're a great one and a resource for me. I'll go look and see, okay, what is Kim talking about? Let's go prove it or sometimes disprove it. Or let's look and see what people are, are saying works and see if those tactics really work, you know, kind of on a smaller level. Um, so our theory has always been that we, you know, we bust the myths, rumors, and stories of social media marketing with science. And, and I really do use the scientific method, you know, the you're gathering research. You might remember this from like 10th grade biology, you know, gathering research, forming a hypothesis, setting up and running your tests, and then drawing a conclusion based on the data and then reporting the data back out to everyone. Um, and that's been really interesting for me the last four years is, is really kind of take that different approach. I write less now um, than I did years and years and years ago when I was pumping out five blog posts a week. Now it's like, I might get one a month, <laughs> you know, yeah. at this point, because some of these tests take six to eight weeks. 
to yeah. really run through and kind of dive into the data. But what's funny and what's been really neat, and, and I, I'll take full credit for it, um, is now we're seeing in our industry, you'll, you probably noticed this, there's a lot in our industry now that talk about data and science a whole lot more. Um, yeah. And statistically significant calculators and all these things. Um, and so I, I, I'm going to take full credit that I pushed that needle a little bit, and that's fine. Um, and, <laughs> and so the hair did it. My yeah, friend. well, and that's in the hair is a whole other story too. Like yeah. in, in this little character right here, I ever can point on camera, right? This is we we created this little guy for our blog, uh, just to be on the featured images and on the inline images inside the the blog post, and we ran with that for like two years. And one day, I I showed up to a company meeting. You can't see it; it's hanging on another wall. I showed up with a different lab coat and, and this crazy orange wig to a company meeting, which is we're a virtual team, uh, all remote, and we're based out of Paris, France. And so I just hopped on camera and said, hey, and everybody got a big laugh and we're chuckling and they're like, that's hilarious. And we said, hey, let's start this live video show. This is like December 2018. We said January 2019, we want to start a live video show. I'd never done live video in my life up until that point. And I'm like, what if I dress up? And my boss, Mike Alton, was like, you sure you want to do that? I'm like, why not? Because yeah. they're going to remember this. They're not going to remember yeah. the dude in a baseball cap and a, and a hoodie, <laughs> which is how I look if you see me at any other time off camera. And so it just took off from there and it's been fun branding. It's memorable. And just like you, 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 you change your hair. People notice it. You wear the different colored glasses. People notice it. Um, so the branding really connected us, I think, and gotten, you know, people can find us easier. Well, we were, you know, going back to talking a little bit about the colors and stuff, hair, right. changing your hair color, changing, you know, I changed my hair color, but my red glasses now clash with my hair. So first world problems, right? Right. Um, so talk, share a little bit about um, before, because I want to really get to the myth busting here in just a moment. But I want um, everyone to understand, like the concept of st uh, statistical uh, significance calculator. I've heard you use that term before. And then what metrics like do you, I mean, I'm sure every, um, every uh, experiment uh, I got to get my language right. Every experiment um, is, has probably have di has different, um, ingredients. Yeah. Um, but across the board though, what is that, what does that term statistical significance calculator mean? Right. And before we get to that, I like that Rhonda commented the first time she walked by me without the wig, she, she walked right past. She did. And Kim, <laughs> Kim did too, by the way, in Denver oh. at social media week, uh, Denver, uh, or social media, whatever it was like, I walked by in the lobby and they didn't recognize, me, which is, I thought was hilarious. And I did it on purpose, but anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, statistically significant what that means. And there's a really geeky formula. Feel free to go look it up. It's, you know, I don't remember it. I just use tools because I'm smart. <laughs> use tools. But basically what it does is you, you put in your, you know, let's say for like from social media, a lot, we're looking at say Facebook posts. I, I want to measure the success of this test to this test. So I look at reach, let's say reach. That's a big one. So I'll, I'll use reach as my big, huge number and then clicks, let's say, because I'm sending people to traffic, you know, to a website. So I look at clicks as my smaller. I do both. So I got A and I got B and then it'll give me a conversion rate. And then I use Neil Patel's statistically significant calculator, which used to just be called the AB split tester up until about six months ago. Wink, wink. I think he changed. I'm taking credit for that, too. <laughs> Um, seriously, he, I use it all the time. I'm always writing about it. And now he changed it. I think it's really, really funny. Uh, but what it does is it gives you in, in, in the scientific geeky terms, it gives you what's called a P value, uh, which is this really long formula and this weird looking number that doesn't make sense unless you put it in a calculator like Neil Patel's. And what it does though, is what it, when, it, when it's all said and done, you want to know that your test, if you were to run it again, or if Kim were to run it or Rhonda or Paul or anybody else commenting were to run this test again, they would get the same results. And if you can't get at least 95% certainty through the statistically significant calculator, it's not, it's not scientific. And that's, that's the key. Um, so we, we, I usually try to stick to 95%. Like right now, this is a good, this is a good scenario use case The all the COVID vaccines that we're seeing, they're using statistically significant calculators to try to figure out should they use them or not. So you're hearing all the success rates, that's statistically significant calculators that they're using. They're they're trying to hit that 95. They want to hit 97 percent um, in reality because that's a big for for medical terms. Yeah. 95 is is good enough for for marketing. Uh, yeah. But that's the thing. A lot of times you like I could plug in my numbers in the, in that calculator. And it'll say 89 percent certainty test B will be better. Sounds good to me. It's not scientific though. 
Uh, mm -hmm. It's not enough. And so you want to make sure your, your tests are good enough. Um, that way, when someone else runs it again or you do it again, you should get the same results. Well, interestingly enough, and I think this is a big question because I, I think a lot of um, entrepreneurs are str they or they struggle with the numbers, right. you know, like, you know, let, let's just put throw stuff at the wall and hope it sticks. Like, right. <laughs> that was certainly me for uh, a long time. I'm now paying more attention to my numbers. Oh, you have to. Yeah. Uh, and I think a lot of people are honestly uh, more now than they ever have been. And we'll just give you credit for that, Scott. OK, so because I I'll think that's. It. Uh, so seriously though, um, but I, w and I, I'll go back to something I heard, um, uh, Holly Homer say not long ago, um, where social media is a Petri dish. Right. We have the opportunity to test all this stuff for free. As long as we understand that we can and should be doing just that. So when it comes to like get, Getting apologize for my puppy. Um, she's barking at the door, but it's obviously here. Yeah. So yeah, so hopefully somebody will uh, get in there uh, or go let her out. Anyway, um, what is it though? Like w from the perspective of somebody like a regular, a, a business owner who wants to like do a test, like, and I think we should all be doing our own testing. Right. By the way, now what we're gonna discover from Scott today, we're gonna get into this in just a moment, where I'm gonna just break down some of the things I've heard and ask him, are they true or not? Okay, so hang in there, we're getting there. But I also want you guys to understand that you can do your own testing. Like one of the things that we're doing, and I have a challenge for you, Scott, for a test. Okay. So an upcoming, I'll tell you at the end, but I'm going to share something that we're doing that we're testing and I, I'm just testing it internally, but I would love it if like you could test it and well, like, I got my pen, I got my pen ready to write it and down. Prove it. Okay. So <laughs> hang in there. I'm going to ask that question, but what, like, what is a basic simple thing that any business owner can do? Um, to test something in the social media space. I mean, there, there's a lot there. It depends on what site you're on. Like even like tests that we've run that are organic that didn't cost us a thing would be changing up your copy in your post, the length of the copy in your post. That's an easy one. Add any emojis or not. Does it get you more engagement? Um, changing the color of your photos. Like we've tested black and white pictures versus color pictures. We've tested graphics versus human faces and human faces always win um, on all the social platforms when we've tested them. So there's little things like that that you can do that are free. that don't cost you anything and that are worth testing. Um, I will say, and this is the thing I think where most people, and, I, and I've been guilty of this too, is we give up or we make a decision too quick. We'll do it once and then go that tanked or they did really well. And then we make a decision right then uh, to, to switch. And that's, that's the wrong way to do it. You've got to take time to test something out. So, you know, depending on how much you post, how often you change things up, give it, you know, I, I for me, if I'm testing, let's say a, a type of post or a way to post, say on Instagram, I want at least 10, you know, 10, 10 posts in my A camp, 10 posts in my B camp, and then compare the data. That way I kind of get a, a good average because you may just have one to skyrockets or one that just does really, really poorly. And you want to be able to kind of average things out. Um, and that's the other thing too, like when you're testing, especially organic stuff, you've got to make sure that you're, you're comparing apples to apples. Sometimes people are comparing apples to semi trucks, uh, because they're, they're, they're running the test and they've been on one of them. They, one post, they put in a lot of hashtags, they tag 10 people. They, you know, they use a location. They did this and did that where this other one, they didn't. Um, and so one of them, of course, is going to get more engagement, more reach because you did a lot of stuff to it. So I remove all, all those anomalies when we test things. There's no hashtags. There's no tagging locations. There's no tagging people, um, which is not which is as a marketer. You're like cringe because you don't want to do that um, because, you, you know, that helps you. Uh, but it's a way to test. It's the only way I can really test and kind of get the best day. So I, my recommendation is do at least 10 of each before you make any decision. And that could take you some time yeah. um, and take into account days at days of the week times a day, holidays, what's going on in the news, where you're, where you're at. Um, so those things all kind of play in. Um, and I like removing the, the highest performing and lowest performing in both. The way I just pull those out. Um, that way I'm looking at the meat in the middle and then look at percentage differences, not just raw numbers. Uh, raw numbers don't tell you anything. It's the percentage differences that really uh, to me, make the difference. Uh, yeah. and I, I put a link in on Facebook anyway. I put a link to the Neil Patel's calculator. Yeah, use that thing. I use that thing all the time. That's um, awesome. It, it helps you out big time. 
Yeah. Okay. So y'all, we're getting ready to get into the true myth busting uh, part of, of today's show. Don't forget to drop in your um, aha moments um, so that you'll be eligible to win. Okay. So don't forget that. Um, if you're just joining us, um, just sprinkle this out into the world. Like I say, there's, you're going to pick, you're going to learn um, some of the commonly held um myths that are out there in the social media space you're going to learn whether they're true or not all right so let's get to the meat of this so scott hmm. which is better my friend boosting a post from the post like hitting that little boost button down under because it's so easy no. or for heaven's sakes, please use the stinking ads manager. <laughs> oh man, this this one is, is long standing with me, and it's been a battle I've had for years. Uh, I had a small business for a long time, a bounce house business, running out water slides and bounce houses and stuff to kids. And I loved the boost button with that business because it was cheap, it was easy. I pushed a button, spent ten bucks, boom, I could I could show sales from that immediately. Now, so I used to use it all the time. Yeah, and, and so. I went off my data I had back then. This was like six years ago. And it worked great for me for, for that purpose because I had a very small budget. I didn't need to target much other than the people who followed my page. And that was it. Um, I ran a test here. Gosh, it's, it's late last year. And we tested the boost button versus you know running the same ad through Ads Manager. Uh, we spent, I'm trying to look at the post real quick. We, we spent about $1,500 testing and comparing the two. Um, and... It, I, I didn't like the results of this one because I was wrong because uh, the Facebook ads manager way outperformed. Uh, and that's just the flat out science of it. Okay. Um, so it, I'm, I'm just curious, like, um, I was, they, I was surprised, honestly. So those that are with us live and anybody that's on the replay watching on the replay, are you currently boosting from the post or are you using ads manager? So going back to the original yeah. question, which is a or B, like, are you boosting from the post because it's so easy? Um, or are you, um, you know, using the ads manager, like Scott said, just in case you didn't catch it, if you are using the boost post because it's so easy, well, y'all news, <laughs> You're going to get better results if you use the ads manager. Yeah, and let me give you like quick, quick results that we saw in our test. And we were pushing traffic. We were pushing people to, to a blog post on the, on the lab. Um, and so what we found is, is our difference in results. We end up with 17% um, more clicks from the ads through ads manager. Uh, we had 64% higher reach through the ads through ads manager. And we had about 18.5% lower cost per click. Uh, on the ads to the ads manager. Um, that's a, that it was it was statistically significant. It was a big enough amount where I went, okay, if I'm gonna if at least for this purpose, if I'm gonna push traffic to a blog post or to a link or to landing page, I probably should go to the ads manager because Facebook will play around with your ad dollars a little bit better. They'll optimize it better. Um, and you can target different. Now we'll see, I mean, the boost button though still has value. I think they've changed it a lot. It's a little easier now. You can target and do stuff. And if you want to play around and get your toes wet. You know, it's okay. I'm gonna spend five dollars today, just try it out. It, it's it may be worth trying here and there, uh, well, but the targeting and stuff is so much better than Ads Manager. Uh, yeah, and I almost think. I mean, I don't know this. This will, maybe this would be another uh, thing to test, but and maybe by virtue of doing the original test, it it proves this hypothesis. But I don't know for sure. But I almost feel like that Facebook really wants us to use Ads Manager, and yeah. they give us better results because we do sometimes now whether or not that's true or not you would think that if that was true though uh, being the devil's advocate that they would remove the boost bu button right right i mean oh. yeah i mean i think i think the boost buttons like that i don't can't think of a better way to say it. it's like a gateway drug <laughs> it gets you started you're like yeah. okay i try this i saw some six like someone said they've used a little bow or maybe they use boost just to quickly re-engage the people who follow their page it still has value there and you can still now they've changed boost a lot. You can use your, your, your saved audiences and some other stuff inside there, but you get limited on like placements and stuff like that. You can't do as much with it. Um, and you're also limited to just stuff that's already gone live on your page where an ad doesn't have to even be live on your page. Right. It'd just be something you decide to post. Really uh, good point. And so you get a lot more control inside ads manager boost. You don't get as much control. 
Um, and so I, the science, even though I, I've been I've been a huge, huge fan. I was somebody who converted Dennis Yu into becoming a fan of the boosted the boost button back years and years ago. Wow. He used to argue about it and him and I got in a discussion about it. And he read my my data that I did years ago on it. And he's like, okay, maybe you're right. Because it's real quick, it's easy. And now he still talks about the boost button. He still is a big he likes it. Yeah. Um, just because of the simplicity of it, and again, it's that smaller budget. Yeah. Uh, if I'm going to spend fifteen hundred bucks, boy, if I can get ten, if I can get five percent lower CPC, yeah, I'm using that. We got eighteen percent lower CPC, uh, so that's that's where I'm going. Okay, I'm ads manager only now, and I've even boosted vid live video replays. We tried that as well a few times, and they did really really poorly. Um, so they didn't it didn't help us in a couple different avenues either from link posts or our boosting stuff like this. I'm even playing around with the boosts here again here recently on a video. Um, just again, because I think some people talk about so much because it's easy. Uh, it said easy button. Remember that commercial used to be the easy button? It's the easy uh, button, yeah. It's, it's the easy okay. button, but I think you miss out on a lot of stuff based okay. on the data that we have. Yeah, I totally agree. Okay, next up, y'all. Now, everybody guess, okay? And is it, yeah, everybody that's listening, guess before we get the scoop from Scott. Okay, so long or short copy? So type until the cows come home for your, your post copy or keep it short and sweet. So what do you guys think? Is it long, A, B, short? I'm just curious as to what everybody thinks here. Um, let me get. So, Scott, <laughs> before you started with this, right. what would have been your, your uh, projected outcome? Before you knew the answer. Yeah. And it depends on the site we're talking about too. Like I've actually tested let's this now. Like just one, like let's say, let's do Facebook. Okay. We'll talk about Facebook. Okay. We, we've actually tested, if you go to our, if you go to our website, you can actually yeah. search character. I just tried it on the lab and you can find all the studies we've done on it. Cause we've done it on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and uh, Instagram on, on Facebook. I always have said shorter is best yeah. cause just kind of get it out there, you know, say what you want to say uh, and move on. So when I, when I started my test on this, my hypothesis literally was, Shorter posts have a higher reach and more engagement. That was that's my original hypothesis. And is that true on Facebook? Um, let's see. The data said on us that uh, Facebook posts with less than 140 characters actually did get 50% more comments. Okay. Uh, they got 34 and a half percent more reach, and they had 91% more likes. So it actually did work on our test. Uh, Interesting. The shorter but ones did work. Okay, so uh, let's test. flip this the platform though real quick because when uh, and go to Instagram and is that same hypothesis true? This is what's fascinating about social media is like the platforms mess with us. <laughs> they mess with us. So is is the shorter the better option on Instagram or is the long copy performing better? On, on Instagram, it was basically a meh. To be honest with you, it was like there was really no difference. It, it kind of, it was like just it was it was small enough that it I couldn't even it wasn't statistically significant. It, there wasn't it was like it was like a three four percent difference one way or the other depending on what data you looked at. Yeah. Um, and because in Instagram especially especially because you know granted everybody's mobile now more than anything, you know the, the little read more comes up after about seventy four characters, uh, and so. What is short? I mean, it's really got to be really short to be yeah. considered short because anything that gets you know, to that read more is long in essence. Um, so, it, yeah, it, I, we didn't see much difference. And I think on Instagram, it's all about the quality. I don't think everywhere, really. But Instagram, especially the quality of the posts um, is so much more important than how, how much you, you put in there. Now, I, I do think for me and this is and I play around with this a lot. And I know you do, too, as well. Um, I like playing around with really long descriptions of, of photos or links or live video shows because it's going to make people stop. They're going to hit that little read more or see more and read, 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 and maybe click on your links. And um, so I, I think there's still value in it. Yeah. But again, but again, test it with your audience. See, I was see, trying to say yeah, yes. Yeah, so see, even, see though, even though a lot of what uh, Scott is saying um, right now has been statistically proven, yeah, it doesn't mean that it's no. um, a hard right, you know, meaning that this is the only way you to do it. Right. Everybody's audiences are different. And spe specifically as it relates to things like this, like I yeah. would say with like Facebook ads and things like that, like boosting or not boosting uh, or uh, boosting or using the ads manager. Those are things that are not always like directly tied to our communities. Right. But with our communities, um, 
how they engage with us can vary greatly. Sure. So a short, a short copy could be your thing. Long copy could be your thing. I see a lot of um, marketers using long copy specifically on Instagram. So it's, it's just really interesting and, how it's different. Yeah. And it's something too, like I, I'm in that phase now with, with the lab where, okay, I tested this, let's say two years ago, I got to retest it now to see if it changes. Yes. So some of the stuff, some of the stuff I've come back, I've tested Instagram carousels so many times. In the beginning, they were really awful. And then the second time they weren't as awful. The third time they actually did good. I'm like, okay, well, the users have changed their behavior. And yeah. so, I, you know, things do change. So you got to constantly be moving out. And Laura said in the comments, you know, I'm not the only person that finds this exhausting, keeping up with everything. Yeah, it is because stuff yes. has changed so much. Yeah. Um, and you got to kind of just see what other people are doing and kind of play with it for years for a little while and see if it works or doesn't work. But define what work is. That's the you know, well, important part so too. I mentioned it a moment ago. It's one of the things that we're doing right now te and testing, which I'm going to talk to uh, Scott about towards the end. So hang in there. Those of you who are like, oh, man, this stuff is just hard. Like we're using some old stuff and trying to breathe new life into it. So that might be really interesting um, for you guys. So hang in there with me. All right. <laughs> next question. And feel free to ask your all's questions too. If there's a like something you heard, you don't know if it's true. Like we'll pick Scott's brain. That's what he's here for, right? Sounds okay. Good. So you guys, at, let me know um, what your thoughts are and which way you go. Where do you put the hashtags on Instagram? Now everybody says something different. I've heard <laughs> a variation of this. Like you need to put it in your post copy. Like you need to, your hashtags need to be in your original post copy, or B, they need to be in the first comment below the post. So. What say you guys, which is it? Which one are you currently doing a or B and statistically speaking, is there a difference? Do you want me to reveal it now? Or you want to see if they say anything? Let's see. So, so what if some of them are starting to answer? They're starting to answer now. So yeah. Yeah. He, they're, he's loving all the color hair. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we're getting some B's, we're getting some A's. So Christine mm -hmm. says A, uh, Rhonda says B, Paul says B, uh, Latoya says B, Maria. Yeah, we got we got more B's than A's. So yeah, so I mean, I, I tested this, and I'm in the middle. I'm in the process of retesting this one right now because you know, like again, things change. Yeah. And we got to kind of see where it works, but I tested this across multiple. And here's the thing with Instagram. I have fun with, I have a little more fun with Instagram testing because I have about 10 or 11 accounts in different industries and entertainment stuff to play around with. Um, so I really am testing the algorithm versus an audience, which is kind of nice. Um, we tested, you know, adding it into the hashtag into the original post versus coming back and adding it to the first, you know, comment. Here's, here's the, the percentage data that we found. Um, we had likes were almost 10% higher with hashtags in the original post. Comments were a little over 19% higher with hashtags in the comments, which it was opposite of what I thought it would be. But then we had all this other stuff too. Where here's the biggest one for me. Reach was 29% higher when we put the hashtags in the original post versus the comments. So, I mean, our, our conclusion based on the data, based on pulling out was, put the hashtags in the, in the original post. Don't yeah. worry about coming back and put it in the comments because, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, Facebook, Instagram, all these sites, they're smart. They know when marketers have figured out a trick. Um, they, we've seen that happen, you and I, for 10 years. Uh, we figure something out. We get all excited about it. We tell the world and then it tanks because they went, no, you're not doing that anymore. Well, you um, know, I've heard, I've heard <laughs> saying that marketers run all good things. We do. We do. Um, yeah. and, and so I, it makes sense that you should put it in the original post because here's the thing you want to get out there as fast as you can for one, because that's how it'll determine where it shows up on the explorer, you know, or the search on Instagram. But, but hashtags are not for your audience that follows you on Instagram. Hashtags people who don't know who you are uh, yeah. and haven't followed you yet. Your users, your followers probably are never going to even see them. They're probably never going to click on them. Uh, so, it's about your audience that you don't know yet. So what do you think about this, Sherry? And I hope I'm saying that correctly, is asking, what if you do both? Um, yeah, that's a good question. That's a good there, question. There, there's another there's another test there. Yeah, I wonder how we would test. test. Yeah, we could that would be interesting when the test I do five in the comments, five in the 
um, in the original post. And the key there too is the timing of it. When I ran this test, there were no approved apps that allowed you to add your first comment when you scheduled it. Right. And so I would have to manually go back and add in the comments with the hashtag in there first. And so it was a timing thing. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, if I couldn't do it in the first 10 minutes or so, I didn't, I didn't do it. Because uh, and pulled it out. Oh, for sure. Yes. And, and there is a few now that are starting to get, get the approval to do that. Instagram's allowed them through their API kind of in a beta. Uh, who knows if they'll allow them to keep doing it or not. But again, it's, there's really, to me, go ahead and get it on there. And you, so you know it's on there. It's, you can use every app that you use to schedule it. If you want to do the dot, 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 and a whole bunch of white space and put it in the bottom, which entices people to click that read more anyway. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with doing that. You get it on there. There's so many things you can do. That's the thing, right? And uh, it goes back to testing um, with your communities, I think, and timing. I, I totally agree with the timing uh, issue as well. So um, next uh, thing I've heard quite a bit about, and this is as it relates to emojis. And you guys drop in your emoji. Okay, so this is an emoji question. So you have to pull out your emojis. If, you, um, if you're on your phone, it's easy. Uh, actually, actually, wherever you are, if you even on your desktop, you can pull out your emoji um, and put use a smiley um, face with the hearts. If it's yep or nope, uh, it doesn't make any difference. So the question is, do emojis increase reach on Facebook? Yes or no. What do you guys think? Um, Wonder what everybody's gonna I say. Know. I don't know. I got a crying face. We got somebody. Maria put wine glasses. I like that one. I know, right? <laughs> it's, it's five o'clock somewhere, you know. It uh, is. <laughs> okay, so so we got Latoya has got the smiley face. So she's saying, uh, "Yep." And we've got some fire. We've got some. Vicky's got some. Yes, it emojis do help. Um, so Steve is just saying yes, they help. It, all right. So what do you think? Yeah. So what, what we did is we tested and a lot of times the testing too. emojis are a weird thing to test to, to be honest with you, especially as a guy in my forties and, you know, <laughs> and uh, we've tested on Instagram, we tested on Twitter, we've tested on Facebook. We did one emoji at the beginning of a post just to kind of see if it did anything or not. Did it cause any, any changes? And the data that we found on our test was Facebook posts with emojis got about 8% more impressions 24% more engagement and ended up right at about 29% higher clicks. So that one emoji at the very beginning of my text post, part of the post did better on Facebook to my surprise. And now I include them almost on everything <laughs> when I'm doing, especially my live video show descriptions. You'll notice I put the little flame, which kind of looks like my hair. Uh, I'll put that in there to kind of draw some attention. So I, uh, my recommendation based on the data we have is yeah, use, use an emoji on Facebook on your post, especially in the, on the very beginning of it. Cause again, if you use them, you know, midway down, you can maybe make it fun later, but they only going to see 75 to hundred characters anyway. So use one right at the very beginning. Our data says you get more engagement, more impressions, more reach, all the good stuff. Ooh. And I think that's true for other things too. Honestly, um, I, we've seen an increase in open rates for uh, using emojis in our subject lines. Um, so, yeah. Lots of um, application for those little funny, like, yeah, I mean, oh, right? Oh. Well, it's it's you know what you think now because everybody is so mobile now. It's a thumb, it's a thumb stopper. That's what we've always been trying to do as marketers. We're trying to stop the scroll, and so if it's something that's a little different that stands out, like oh, what is that? Okay, cool. Yeah. And and so you want to you want to kind of mix it up. I think some people get funny, and, you know, they use it for words and stuff. I just use it more just to catch attention or even use it. If I'm writing, especially like a, a live video show description and I've got points I'm going to make, you know, I'll use one for, instead of using a dot or a number list, I'll just use it emoji instead. Yeah. Um, it stands out and people see it and they go, oh, okay, cool. And especially they get to know it and they're used to it. But um, I think it does, it does stop the scroll. And pretty much every time we've tested on almost every account, every site, I think Twitter didn't do as good. It did worse on Twitter. 
uh, when we tested it, but Facebook, Instagram, it, it did better on both of those. Yeah, but that's really good to know. It goes back to the fact that every platform is different and we do have to treat it differently. Yeah, and I bet if we were to test this on LinkedIn, it wouldn't do very well at all. <laughs> that's a good test though. Such Seriously. a different animal over there, yeah. Yes, so true. Um, in fact, I we had a comment come through earlier that um, a gentleman was saying he was a LinkedIn expert, but he didn't know the answer to that. Like, you know, he's like, I would love to know if that's true or not. Okay, so next question, um, myth bust er that we are going to do, guys, is one of my favorites, and I get this question all the stinking time, and I know you do as well, Scott, is mm. does it matter if you use a third party tool to schedule your content? Yep. And you guys, I'd love to know where you all are on this. Are you currently um uh, you know sharing your let me pull up, let's see. Okay, never mind. I'm trying to do a back end thing with my show and it's not working. So question is, are you currently scheduling your content um, or are you not scheduling your content because you're going you're afraid that um, your reach is going to go down, which is what we hear quite frequently is we are going to get dinged if we don't have if we're using a third party tool. So what? is going on here. So B, Vicky says, no, it doesn't matter. What, how about everybody else? Uh, yeah, speaking because I know uh, you <laughs> work for Agora, uh, yeah. the scheduling tool. So it you is. have got to know this, right? Yeah. And, and this is one of those things too. Like I remember, gosh, we mentioned post planner years, you know, you and I met each other kind of through there years ago, we had this argument and tested and talked and we see, we see when the reason this argument, especially for Facebook comes up is, big and i won't name their sites but some some big companies will, will look at let's say 50 million facebook posts and they'll they'll push out their results and say hey we found anytime you use a third party tool you're getting 25 percent less reach or engagement or whatever everybody freaks out but the problem is is though they're not taking into consideration actual scheduling tools for businesses they're they're lumping in let's say an agora pulse with ifttt or an RSS read feeder, you know, feed reader, or the weather channel forecasting, you know, automatically, or cross posting from Twitter to Facebook. They they lump all that in, so it really kind of messes things up. Um, and so, yeah, this is one like this, this argument, especially on Facebook, is like a daily one for me. Um, I get it with Instagram. We've tested on every site, every platform so far, and I and I can say confidently, without even going back to the blog post. <laughs> <laughs> there is no punishment for using a third-party tool, regardless of the tool. There is no punishment using a third-party tool to publish to Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or LinkedIn. We haven't seen any punishment whatsoever. It's either, you know, your reach is about the same in most cases. Some, many, every time on Facebook, this is the funny part about Facebook. Every time I've done the test, Facebook reach and engagement on the posts on third party apps is better. I can't get We can't use it as like our mantra, like, Hey, use Agora polls. You get 25% more reach, but it's interesting because yeah. I think what it is, is it is you, you schedule it. You think about it. You write better content. You take longer time to craft out your posts to, to create your images where sometimes you post on the fly. You're very quick. you got misspelled words. You're not really thinking about how it looks. Uh, and so I think that that plays into that side of it. But yeah, th there's no reason that Facebook would ever punish posts from a third party tool, because why would they give us access to the API if they were going to do that? Yeah. Um, and so that's the thing for me is like there's no punishment. People will keep saying it because what will happen here is like they'll they'll you they'll post once with an app and it does really poor. And they'll blame the app, but really it's your content. <laughs> it had nothing to do with the app or it had to do with the time of the day or, or whatever. Um, it's not the app's fault, uh, yeah. but your engagement does not is not based on the app. It's based on the quality of the content in your audience. So, Scott, what is a big myth that you hear all the time that I didn't ask? Oh, God, there's so many of them. That's, that's the biggest one, honestly. Um, I mean, I, I think... I'm playing around a lot with ads right now to see what's difference in ads. Like the one I'm working on right now is uh, remember the Facebook used to have the 20% text rule uh, yeah. on ads and they took that on image ads. And they took that away here recently. Now you're supposed to be able to do whatever you want. People are still saying and claiming they're not getting as much exposure with more text. Um, so I'm in the middle of testing that um, to see 
Does it matter if I put 20, 20% text, 50, 100, zero? Um, so that's a big one. Um, and, and I think it's the third party tool when I think is going to keep coming around, even on the, the live streaming apps. Um, people, because the live stream is so hot right now, people think, you know, is it better to go natively on Facebook versus using an app like StreamYard, like you're using, or a Restream, or BeLive, or an Ecamm, or whatever else there is? Uh, you know, don't, people are going to argue about that. You know? Yeah, or even using um, uh, the, um, the, the, in, the, um, the tool that Facebook gives us or the create that Facebook gives us. Like, um, and what is, what have you found so far on that? Have you done any testing on that? Whether it matters? I'm just curious. You know, so I did some preliminary. I tested all the different apps that are out there. I didn't see any difference because really the, the, what I'm finding anyway, at least for ease of use, the third party tools that do live streaming are make can do so much more. You can pull in these overlays, you can pull in these comments, you can do all this stuff where on Facebook natively live, you really can't do much of anything. Um, you can't pull in your comments. You can do a little bit with graphics, but not a lot. Yeah. So it's not as engaging. Um, and your whole, and I'm actually fixing to do a live show in about 20 minutes um, that I do called live stream labs with restream talking all about the five video matrix for live video that matter the most for Facebook live. And comments always ends up being the number one thing people talk about because that's the whole point. Like you're trying to get people to comment, and you want to pull them on screen. You can't do that natively inside Facebook. You can get them to comment, but you can't pull it up and show them off um, and natively. And so, yeah, I think those are the big ones. I, I think there's still that, you know, Instagram stories versus Instagram feed. Which ones are better? Um, you know, we did a study recently on ads on that actually, and the feed ads did better than the story ads which was opposite of what we had a year or two ago when we tested it. So, Okay. Well, hopefully you guys got the skinny on what's true and what is not true. Um, we're going to be pulling um, our winners uh, uh, for today's prizes. But one of the things that I, um, well, two things. I had mentioned that we were going to give away a humdinger of a prize at the end. Um, and our humdinger of a prize is a year, a year, a year of Agora Pulse, nice. which is my favorite scheduling tool. Now that we've said, hey, it doesn't matter if you uh, schedule or not. So my question to you is this, would you rather post whenever you get a chance, which sometimes is a problem because you're like, oh, oh my gosh, I got to stop what I'm doing. I got to go. I got to go put something on Facebook. Or would you rather pre-schedule and be worry free? Um, now that you know that it doesn't matter whether or not you uh, use a third party tool or not. Yes. Right. So I'm just curious, what would you guys rather have? Worry free or worry? I'm just saying. So I'm a big fan of a girl. Don't Pulse. worry. Be you. happy. Don't worry. Be happy now. Everybody. <laughs> yeah. I told Scott you had to, had to uh, totally bring it with that go. song. Yeah, you gotta, everybody, I mean, that song was the best back in the day. Like it 80s is. and 90s. Yeah. Who was it? Bobby McPherson? Is that his name? Bobby? Yeah, I don't know. Bobby something. Somebody can say in the chat. I'm sure. Yeah. But. But we, we definitely, yeah, we could have him serenade us with that one. Um, <laughs> so the Amazon gift card winner is Paul. Sweet. So um, one of, so Paul, if you'll go to um, kimgars.com forward slash winner and pop in your mm -hmm. information, which will get you taken care of. But a year of Agora Pulse, let's focus on that because I'm super excited to be giving this away. Um, because That's a big prize because, I mean, you know, it's, if you, if, if you haven't used it, like, oh, I don't even know no i mean it's it's a couple hundred dollars a month if you were to buy it per month so yeah so uh, especially yeah. one one you're probably giving away it's probably at least 200 dollars a month top uh, package i know is pretty pricey but, but yeah I mean, if you got a team if you've got multiple accounts if you want to run your comment you manage your comments from facebook ads your messages from everywhere yep. if you want to spy on your competition there's a lot of things you can do inside the app that people can your competition we're going to talk about that so i also said i had a really uh, I, and i've got to talk quick because um we got to make sure that we get scott out of here <laughs> because he's getting ready to start his show but the go social content winners are Jeannie, christina and steve if you guys will go um to kimgars.com forward slash winner we'll get you guys taken care of and then who is the or our grand prize winner is vicky Woo! Woo! 
So you won a Girl Repulse Girl for a Congrats, whole year. You are going to love it. Okay. So my challenge to you, Scott, is um, I have got content on my um, Facebook page mm -hmm. that I shared like years ago, yeah. like, you know, things that were, um, well, hang on, let me just pull it up here and I'll show, show you guys, because I think this is a show, not tell kind of scenario. Um, so this particular post, um, was originally shared in 2016 and it's had 20,000 comments, 32 million views. Ooh and 96,000 emojis, right? So one of the things that we're doing, um, and this is my challenge to you to prove if this is true, is we're going back to what I call my viral content mm -hmm. and we're resharing it from the original post and it is killing it. Really? So let me give you a couple of examples of something. So here's one. Um, I wish heaven had visiting hours, right? It was originally posted. Um, let's see. It was originally posted uh, in 2017 and it's already got 69 comments and 147 shares. That's the new, the new engagement. That's the new engagement. Yeah. Um, mm. I've got some that, let me see if I can just pull another one up here real quick. Um, uh, there's one that I had that had like 2 million shares on it. And, uh, when I reshared it, it went through the roof again. Mm. Um, so it's just really a fascinating th thing. And we, we've taken the last couple of months, um, last couple of weeks, we're going to, we've dedicated two weeks to it to your point, dedicate a timeline. But just from a numbers perspective, I would just show like my numbers are up. My people, my reach number is up 62%. My post engagements are up 130%. And my page likes are up 27% right now. That's just, that's kind of going back old school to, right? you know, the, you know, the post planner, Josh Parkinson days of, of, right. You know, share, reshare. Because you think Facebook kind of went went kind of man dull on some of that viral content sort of meme stuff, but I think we've kind of some people want some of that right now. Yeah, um, so that might be a good time to do it, especially after all this election stuff that we gone through in the U.S. Yeah, that so, could be an interesting test. You had to figure out, you know, one, what's your top post, and then are are you scheduling through a tool? Or are you just sharing straight from the page? I'm sharing. Um from the page because right, I, have right, share right, right. From, I have to share from the post. Yeah. Um, so you're not, you're not, that's why because you could, someone could just say, I'll just copy the link and post it. But I guess we could do well, that. You really can't because Facebook will not parse. Facebook does no longer allow a third party tool to parse anything from their links inside them. So, okay. which is so, unfortunate. Yeah. But, so I guess uh, you would have to share it inside yeah. Facebook to do that, to do it accurately anyway. And then on another note, since I'm ta we're ta talking about testing and I always like to get a feel for, you know, if there's interest or not, who would be interested in like, you know, a graphics package with all my top viral content? Me, me, me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, should, they should put like viral content or something in the comments. I'm telling you. I mean, I have been very blessed with all of my. I love um, all the images you guys create. Yeah. yeah I, so, I follow it for years. It's so fun yeah. to watch what you do. Yeah. Well, thank you, Scott, for being here, helping us bust some yeah. myths. Hopefully, everybody got some truth uh, as it relates to what is working, what is real, what is maybe just misinformation or fake news uh, when it comes to social media. I want to thank everybody that was joined us live. Anybody that's watching on the replay um, and you, hopefully you guys will have a great rest of your day. Scott, um, I, before I forget, where can everybody find you? Yeah. Just to look for my orange hair, you know, no. Yeah. For, for real. That's probably true. Yeah. You can find everything we've written about and a lot of the studies we just talked about. Just go to agorapulselab.com. It'll forge you over. There's actually a search at the top. You can use that long link to it. takes you over to that longer link, but agorapulselab.com. If you're listening and you just want to type it in, um, you can go right over to that. And that's where we, we hang out. You can listen to our podcasts and all those other things. Yeah. Awesome. Well, guys, I think, thanks again for being with us live. Um, take care of yourself. Stay safe and God bless. Thanks, guys.